Hello. The World Series started yesterday. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Houston Astros played another great game. Yes, because in 1980, when they played the NLCS, four of the five games were extra innings, just like yesterday's game. So the Phillies and the Astros are starting a World Series that I believe is going to be a victory for the Phillies, and that can happen, in my opinion, in four or five games. Because tonight, Zach Wheeler is going to pitch for the Phillies, and I think that this is one of the best pitchers in the major leagues right now. He should have won, uh, be the winner of last year's Cy Young, and I think he is going to, this night, be a lot better than what Aaron Nola and Justin Verlander did yesterday. In the second inning of yesterday's game, Aaron Nola received a home run from Kyle Tucker, and then in the third inning, with two men in base, he came to hit again. And I think Aranola, with the pressure that many pitchers have in Major League Baseball, I would say almost all of them, pitched in the, the maximum count that Tal Tucker was by the middle, and he got another home run, Kyle Tucker against Nola, that put the game 5-0, which made many people think that that was probably going to be enough for the Astros to win the game, especially having Justin Verlander pitching. Now, I think... Nola did not have the guts to walk Kyle Tucker and pitch to the next hitter, who was Julie Gurriel. And he did not have the guts because that is the way baseball is played, especially in a way in, in the World Series, where a pitcher usually doesn't have, let's say, yeah, again, the guts to walk a hitter to try to find, to get a double play that could end the inning without the damage that happened. Ranger Suarez, in his game against the Atlanta Braves, in the first inning, he walked Riley, and then he walked also Olsen, which were two very fearful hitters. And with the bases full, I repeat, in the first inning, Acuna on third, on second, Riley, and on first, Olsen. William Contreras hit for a double play. This meant that Suarez made a lot of pitches in the first inning because he, he simply did not pitch any good balls for Olsen and for Riley. And that made him just last three and a third innings in, in that game. But he could only, he did only receive one run in the game. So a pitcher has to be so confident like he is to do this. 
Aaron Nola didn't do that. And that's why Kyle Tucker hit the second home run against him. This shouldn't have happened if he had, I repeat again, the guts to walk him and be ready to pitch against Gurriel, who hit a grounder to second base that would have been an inning-ending double play. Justin Verlander, he got hit in the fourth and in the fifth inning by mainly Alex Bohm and JT Realmuto, who hit a line drive to the left field wall to score, to drive in the two runs that tied the game. And the Phillies showed yesterday this extraordinary attitude, which has kept them so hot in all this postseason. The, the same attitude where they could win nine games in the middle of the regular season in a row. So the Phillies were very also uh, capable of going to the extra innings because of their bullpen, extraordinary bullpen. Rob Thompson made very smart moves with Jose Alvarado coming in in the fifth inning, just the fifth inning. And then he brought other relievers like Sir Anthony Dominguez, Zach Eflin. And he ended the game with uh, David Robertson. In the 10th inning, it was Real Muto who could hit the ball to the right field stands against Garcia, a Venezuelan pitcher that really uh, is very good. But Real Muto's, let's say, mentality in this first game where he hit, as I told you before, a double that drove in Philadelphia's tying runs to, to you know, make the, the, the game 5-5 five to five in the fifth inning. So Real Mudo had the moment of his life yesterday when in his first postseason he hit the home run that he hit in the 10th inning. Tonight... It's going to be Zach Wheeler against Framber Valdez. Zach Wheeler is for, uh, let's say, my opinion, the best pitcher in the, or, or one, of, one of the two best pitchers in the National League after Jacob de Grom, I, I would say. He has pitched even better than Max Scherzer did or any other pitcher, in my opinion. Zach Wheeler, this year he started 26 games. 19 of those 26 games were games where he only allowed two or less runs. In seven of those 19 games, only he allowed one run. And in eight of those 19 games, he did not allow any runs. So this is something that tells you how, how great this guy is. He, he finished with a 2.82 ERA. 
And, well, he just won uh, <clears throat> 12 games. But when you check these uh, 19 games where he allowed two runs or less, you could see every month of the season he had at least one game with these uh, two or less runs uh, let score. In April, two. In May, four. In June, four. In July, four. In August, two. In September, two. And in October, one. And he had a seven game, uh, uh, games uh, continuity where he only allowed eight runs. This was from May the 18th to June the 22nd. And then he had four games between the 23rd of July and the 9th of August, where in these four games he only allowed five runs. And then to end the season, in the last three games, he only allowed one run. A game against Toronto, the 21st of September, a game against the Cubs, the 27th of September, and against Washington, the 2nd of August. In the postseason, he has pitched three games which have been awesome. October the 7th at St. Louis, He pitched 6.1 innings, allowing only two hits and zero runs. In October the 18th, at San Diego, he pitched seven innings, allowing only one hit and zero earned runs again. And then in October 23rd, In Philadelphia, against San Diego, he pitched six innings, allowing only two earned runs. So this guy is going to probably win tonight's game at Houston. Anyway, he's pitching against Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez had exactly the same ERA than Zach Wheeler in the season, in the regular season, which was 2.82, winning 17 games. And he had, of his 31 games started, 20 games allowing two or less runs among these In six games, he did not allow runs. In five games, he allowed one run. And in nine games, he allowed two runs. So, Framber Valdez had a great season. And in this postseason, in October 12, 13, I'm sorry, he pitched against Seattle 5.2 innings, allowing two earned runs. And in October 20 against the Yankees, he did not allow runs in seven innings pitched. So, really, this is going to be a, a very good second game. I believe the pitchers are going to work tonight very good. Not like yesterday where both starters surprisingly were hit. And, uh, well, uh, I believe the Phillies are going to win in a low-score game against the Astros. And probably they're going to, in my opinion, to win the World Series at their ballpark the Citizens Ballpark in Philadelphia, winning probably two out of the three games there. Maybe. I don't think 
it's going to be like that, but they could win the first two games in Philadelphia after coming out of Houston with two wins. And uh, if, if, you know, tonight happens what should happen, which, which is Zach Wheeler winning. So uh, I think Bryce Harper, as I've been saying in the previous commentaries that I've made is in the moment of his life, he might have in the following years better moments, but up to this point, this is maybe his greatest time. So uh, he and Real Muto and Hoskins might do the damage that they can. Schwarber, well, let, let's see if he if he can hit a home run or two. But uh, I really think Valdez is going to be very hard to hit. So, well, anyway, Wheeler is going to, in my opinion, be the winner of today's game. And uh, I hope that... It is another great game. It wouldn't be strange if it is another extra inning game. So let's see what happens. And uh, as I said before, I believe the Phillies will be the world champions. And I think it's going to happen in Philadelphia. So thank you very much and have a very good game.